there's two names for these type of graphs. We can talk about them as bivariate graphs and sometimes known as scatter graphs as well. And the word bivariate just means two variable. And so we see there's always two variables on the graph. In this case, there's the grade earned and the time spent studying. So these allow us to compare two things and look to see if there's any relationships between them. So if we examine this graph here and try to pick up the big story here, what is the big picture? What is the big story behind this graph? What is it telling you? And you should probably be noticing that the points seem to be getting higher the further along the graph we go. And this being the better grade A than G, and this being less time and more time, that kind of shows us that we see the, the more time we spend studying, generally the better grade you get. So the big moral, I guess, slash story is the more time you study the better your grades. And you guys probably know that. Now is that true for everyone? It isn't. Um, if we take a few examples here, look at what about this person here? So this student, they studied maybe an hour, a little bit more than an hour, and they earned the highest mark uh, on the test out of anybody. So we might consider them lucky, or we might consider them a smarty pants. Could also be the case that maybe they're the teacher's daughter or something, and the teacher gave her all the answers. You never know, but she's unusual. She's done something different in that she's studied hardly anything at all, and she got a really strong grade. Um, another person that's somewhat unusual would be this person up here. And here we noticed they studied almost more hours than anybody. They put up to 10 hours into studying, but they did terrible in the test. So we might think about this person as being somebody who was really unlucky. Maybe they freaked out in the test. Maybe they had a migraine. Maybe they studied for the wrong topic. It was an English exam, but they accidentally stayed up all night studying maths anything like that might describe why this person is what we call an outlier or not following the trend. And another feature on this particular graph that we can point out right now while we're looking at it is that that red line is what we call the line of best fit. I'll define that later on. But you can see this red line has been drawn on and it kind of describes what those points in general are doing. It describes the big story, which is the more time you spend studying, the better you do generally not true for everyone, but true for most people. So when we look at these scatter plots, um, we often use a word called correlation. And correlation really is kind of a synonym for relationship between things. So it indicates a relationship or a connection between two sets of data or two variables. So here again, the correlation, the relationship we see is that big story that the more time you spend studying, generally the better you do on your test. And these pictures here give us a few examples of ways we could describe the trend or the relationship. So here we can see a strong positive relationship or a strong positive correlation, depending on which word you want to use. It's strong because all the points are very close to the line. And it's positive because it's got a positive gradient. It's increasing. So positive because it's increasing graph. And strong points all near line of best fit. This relationship here we see is still positive because it's increasing, but it's slightly more weak. Um, not slightly, it is actually weaker. And here because the points are further away from the line, they don't all follow the trend exactly the same. Here we see another strong relationship where all the points are very close to the line, but in this case it's negative because it's decreasing. Another weak relationship here, we see the points are spread out for f further from the line than the strong relationship, but it's still negative. Moderate, you know, there's a general trend, they're following all the, all the points are kind of following the line pretty closely, but they're not right on top of it like a strong relationship. And here we see no correlation at all, the points are just scattered all over the place. I couldn't, if I wanted to, draw a line of best fit on there that would describe what that data set is doing. So there we have no correlation. Um, sometimes we have things that are considered nonlinear, 
So just be aware of that. If I was going to draw on a line of best fit, I'll do it in red. If I was going to draw on a line of best fit for this graph, it's going to be what we call non-linear because the graph was clearly curved. So the line of best fit kind of tries to fit the points. So that's my trend. We see it starts out slowly and then increases rapidly. And here's another example of a non-linear trend. So again, non-linear just means not straight. So trying to define a few things here. Correlation, again, this is just a relationship between two variables. Again, an example would be time spent studying versus grade earned. Another example could be um, hours in sun as a child versus skin cancer risk as an adult. Oops. So again, the more time that you spend exposed to high UV during the middle of the day as a child, you end up putting yourself at risk for skin cancer later on. So there's a correlation and relationship between those. It doesn't happen at the same time, but there is a connection between the more often, the more times you're burnt as a child, the higher risk you have of getting skin cancer when you're older. The trend or the relationship, again, this relates to um, the idea of correlation. And words that we want to use here are things like positive or negative or no relationship, just see none. And the other words that we want to use to describe these things are things like strong, moderate, and or weak. And you can sometimes say something is like strong to moderate if you're not sure. You can kind of blend the two a little bit. But these are words we would use to describe any relationship. So again, this one here is going to be a moderate negative correlation. Negative because it's decreasing, moderate because the points are a little bit spread out, but generally following the line. Now your line of best fit, this is often abbreviated as LOBF, or at least I do. Um, this is just a line that tries to match the trend of the data as best as possible. So generally aim to have as many points above the line as we have below the line. And again, this can be linear or nonlinear. So in these graphs that we've looked at above, these examples over here are all linear. They're all a straight line. So the line of best fit is linear. And here are a few nonlinear examples. But again, those line of best fits, in this case the blue ones here, they try to match what that data is general and generally doing. They try and match the big picture, the big story of what that data or that graph is showing you. You can kind of think about a line of best fit like going to buy a ball gown or something, um, you're going to be really lucky if you find a ball gown that fits every single part of your body perfectly. But you might find one that fits sort of all right in all ways. Maybe it's a lo little loose in the waist or a little bit tight in the hips or something. But generally it fits all the different parts of your body as good as possible. That's kind of like a line of best fit. You try to get a line on there that's not perfect all the time, but it tries to fit all the data points as good as it can. A balance of kind of good for everybody and not terrible for anyone. Outliers. These are points. What we say is unusually far from 
the trend. So points that are clearly like all the data is doing this one thing and these guys are very clearly not part of the trend. Another example of that would be here this lucky person. Clearly they have not spent a lot of time studying and they've done very well. They're not following the trend that everyone else is doing. And the XY line is a little bit of a tricky thing sometimes, but um, it's important for you guys to think about. So the XY line is where there is a perfect one to one relationship. So the XY line is literally thinking back to graphs, that's y equals mx plus c, but there's no c because the intercept is zero and the gradient is just one. So it's literally just plotting the line y equals x on there. And what happens when you do y equal x, it means, well, when x is 100, y will be 100. When x is 120, y will also be 120. 140 and 140. 160 and 160, you kind of get the idea. So the same value on the y and the x-axis. And so if you plot your y equals x line on there, you can see that it kind of forms a diagonal there. And again, this is the line where, sorry mine's not perfect, but this is where the points on that line match up exactly. 120 to 120, for instance. So a key thing to notice here is that um, if we look at this situation here, if we have arm span versus height, um, a point that is below the y equals x line, let's look at this guy here, does he have a longer arm span or a taller height? What value is bigger here? And here we can see longer arms, shorter height. What about this person up here? They have a height of 192 or something, but they only have arm spans of 180. This is longer, I guess we could say taller, height. So what happens with the y equals x line is that points above that line have a larger y value, so in this case height, and points below that line below the y equals x line have a larger x value. So whatever the context of the graph is, here we're talking about arm spans and height, so all these people below that red line actually have longer arms than they have height. And everybody above the red line clearly has the opposite, they're all taller than their arm span. And anybody on the line, well there's the lucky ones with the golden ratio, who have the perfectly balanced arm span to height ratio. So that comes up in exams from time to time, they get you to talk about the y equals x line, or discuss how that impacts on the data. So these are generally all the vocab words and everything that you would need to kind of describe these graphs and talk about these graphs. Um, on the back of this worksheet, I'm going to go through a few examples and get you guys to do some on your own.